from a friend, but I don't want to be touched all the time head to toe because of my body issues. So, so do you have a mom issue? <laughs> okay, that would make sense. Is that where the safety falling that keeps resonating with me? Yeah, we're going to get to that in a second. But um, do you see how the feet being the furthest mm -hmm. from, let's say, like the heart or like the core yeah. is how she warms up? Mm -hmm. That it has to come in through the earth, mother earth, if you think about it, rather than mom? In parental relationships, mom tends to be patient <laughs> and nurturance, and father tends to be protection. Yeah. And then oftentimes financial stability. That's changing as we change the nature of relationships, but from from past. So I need three people. Come up here. Come. Come on, Carmen, speak up. Okay, so stand there. <laughs> She's going to be the child. Oh, okay. She looks like a mom. You're going to be the mom. <laughs> and you're going to be the dad. So get on her other side. Um, Can't say that. Right, no, right side dad. Switch. And left side mom. Now hook on to her. Okay. She's going to guide the walk. You're just going to walk to that desk. Okay. Okay, now turn around and do it again. No, let's go that way again. Okay. Okay, so the second time it was more balanced. What did you notice about mom and dad when you were walking the first time? She was kind of keeping up with me more. Right, she was behind. She was actually like this. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, and she was keeping up. She was like right there. So you guys can sit down there. So that is an exercise that you could do with clients to get the idea of how the family dynamic is with their mother and their father. So is your father someone that stays behind? Is he one that like sort of pushes you? Yeah, he kind of like supports me from afar. But okay. I'll stay out of my way. Okay. <laughs> it's not you. It's in the energy field. Okay. Okay. And what about your mom? Is your mom always there in your face? Okay. <laughs> because she was not slowing down. She was right there at Basu. Yeah. Like it was. What? Oh, at Basu is like to the pace. Yeah. Okay. So it was. You look Spanish. Yeah. Why is it the same thing? So. When you do that with a client, you can get the dynamic of, and you do that in a group setting, obviously, yeah. in a one-on-one -on -one setting, you're not going to have three people, but um, it will tell you about the dynamic of mom and dad. So dad is always on the right side, and mom is always on the left side. Okay, the left side is the feminine, and the right side is the masculine, okay. subconsciously. Okay. Because your dad acts like more of the mother, the maternal, <laughs> nurturing one. I, is it, does it count that I'm goofy? Because like, I do everything goofy? with my left foot, but like I do everything with the left side of my body. Like it's I take okay. with my left and I ride a scooter with the left, but you're supposed to do the opposite way, they say. But you're a righty? Yeah. Okay. No, that's but, fine. It could be that it's inverted the relationship with your parents, which okay. we've learned about you is. Your mom's much more materialistic stay at home, where your dad is more of like the nurturer. Mm -hmm. Okay? Good morning. Good morning. So it, it, it makes perfect sense. From the subconscious perspective, it makes perfect sense. Okay? So that's something that you can do with clients, and you can see them walk. That's another thing you can do on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll tell you the foot Weird. assignment that okay. you guys could all do. Yeah. And you could do that. And then you could see how clearly mom and dad, in a moment, in just a 30 second thing, I already got the idea of how your family dynamic is. Yeah. 
Okay. We're divorced too. Okay. Okay. I mean, it didn't necessarily show that in this particular activity, but it could be that dad. I mean, because she was like this. She was intentionally. I just thought I could keep up. <laughs> right, because you're just thinking consciously in the mind. But she. That's why you have the child dictate the pace, because the child is going to be the one that's going to lead so that the parents will show you who they are. So you're doing your normal thing. You're the kid. But the parents are going to mimic what the relationship is. Oftentimes what you'll see is that the parents are faster than the kid. And that is an interesting thing because it tells you how the parents are in such control and the kid is in, in control of their life. And let's say your client is 30 or 40 years old, you could see why perhaps they're having difficulty maybe getting a raise or you know in a relationship. Because if the parents are still in control of their life, this child, your client, needs to let go of that. It's too codependent with the parents. So that little activity can show you a lot. Okay? So, okay, so now the parachute. Okay, so yes, Mr. Pachi asked you about safety and falling. What's that about? How do you reconcile that it means both things? Because, like, you know you're falling, but you know that you're not going to, you aren't going to get as hurt as you would without something to catch your fall. Or okay, like what are we hearing there? Falling. That is great. <laughs> What do you hear in the client? That's phenomenal. What question? Your client just shared this. What question comes to mind immediately? Why are you falling? Yeah. What's making you fall? Okay, that's not the question I thought of, but that's okay. So, what's making you fall? Probably my mom, she trips me up a lot. Okay, so the question that I think of is who catches your fall? She is never going to really fall. That means there is someone protecting her always. I feel like I catch my own fall. Okay, so tell me about that. You see how I go into a session right away? Just tell me about that. I'm an only child, so I'm used to being like kind of independent. So when my mom does something and I have to blow up steam, I just handle it myself. Okay. I don't. I mean, now I have her to go to, and she understands. But like before that, I never went to anyone except maybe my grandmother. But how much are you gonna rant to your mom's mom about your mom? Okay. So interesting. So what are you learning about your client? There's a lot and a lot of things. There's a loneliness there. What sign are you? Aries. Okay. Not a lonely sign, but okay. There's probably, just in my astrology brain, thinking there's got to be Capricorn. Capricorn oh is the God. loneliest sign. Oh, Julie's a Capricorn. Oh, God. My best, that's her name, is a Capricorn. Okay, so there has yes. to be Capricorn yes. in, your, in you yeah. because Capricorn's the loneliest sign. So maybe your moon is in Capricorn, especially with the kind of mom that you have. So I use a lot of different tools in, in yeah. session, and astrology is one of them. Um, so That's right there, I hear loneliness. What else do you learn about your client? She handles things on her own. Well, that's already alone. Um, she said she was independent. Okay, so she's independent. Aries is the, ind the most independent sign, so you definitely have that. Um, what issue do you have in your life? If you were coming to counseling, you came today for a reason. She used to do. What what do you want to talk about with the counselor? How to get my mom off my back kind of thing. Or like just how to soften it. Yeah, she has a lot of trust issues with me, my mom. In terms of you not being trustworthy or in terms of... Um, I think it's with herself. 
Yeah. yeah, it's always about the person. Yeah. It's always about the person. She's, so she's projecting onto you, but how does she project it? Um, she, what? <laughs> it's not ridiculous anymore. Um, she kind of tells me stuff over and over, and then gets upset that she does it over and over, but never actually gave me the chance to do it before she said it again. So yes, she's yes. causing the problem herself, and I can't even do anything to fix it. And then, like, I'll tell her, I'm about to do it right before you tell me again. And then she's like, well, you should have done it faster. And I was like, I was doing something else that you told me to do. Okay. Talk about Our tripping. Can you see the trip? Mm -hmm. I can see the trip. I high expectations for you. But she needed to go back. My nose. Like, not I don't either. think, you know, I think it's her mother doesn't realize that she has met that high expectation. She has straight A's. She did. You did a whole bunch of extracurricular activities. You got recommendation letters. Like she's done all the stuff, and her mother just doesn't see it. Like she's blinded. She doesn't see that. Listen, your daughter is one of the smartest ones out of our whole friend group. So, what's the mom's issue? What do you hear? I hear her mom's not accepting her. I hear lack of acceptance. She accept herself. Like no matter what mm -hmm. she's gonna do, it's not gonna be accepted. I think so. because her mother got this bachelor's in something that she thought was gonna be great, and she can't even use it now. Okay, there's definitely an issue there with her mother's success. Yeah. And her mother's, um, whether it's independence or career choice, there has to be. Because she's telling her a lot of stuff like, like stuff that we already know, like don't go out at night. Don't go here, don't do that. Um, you know you have to study, right? Um, you're not about to take your week in college because you're just gonna use it the whole time. But she uses it once now. a month. She's like, it's gonna be a distraction. When nothing else is a distraction, I have a phone here and take my phone. She's not letting me take my car for the summer to college. So what question, she's not letting you take your car? No. Yeah, I've had my car for a year. And I've been driving for two years. Everywhere. Yeah, I drive myself everywhere and then she comes up out of nowhere. <clears throat> I asked my dad yesterday whose idea was it. He said it was my mom's idea. And she said, um, my dad and I, your dad and I think that you should leave your car here for the summer to get acquainted with the campus. Yeah, they don't want her leaving the campus. It's a huge campus. Yeah. yeah. Which I don't plan on right driving there. all over the place. That's the problem. They don't want her running around and going to like the gas station at midnight is what they specifically said. Like, you have postmates. Like, you exactly. OK, so what question? I want you guys to think of question. The client is not sharing a story for no reason. So questions should be prompted at all times as they're sharing. I've asked all those questions. What do you want to know? I want to know what you do about it. How do you handle those situations? OK. That's what fair. What do you think your mother is putting these together? Yes. <laughs> you gotta go to the other person. It's not always about you, yeah. but obviously you're in the middle of it. So and that's why what would we want her to know what her mother's trigger is or what her mother's reasoning is? No, Maybe not to avoid it. To not make her mistakes, like not do something that I'm not going to use in the future. Well, that's too long term. Mm -hmm. What was that? Yeah. Okay, and you're validating your client that her mother is crazy. Right. You're not not validating <laughs> the mom of right. the client, <laughs> but, but absolutely, wrong. if you can understand that this has nothing to do about you, nothing to do with you, I already do understand that. Then there's understanding in the situation. It doesn't mean that we won't go deeper, mm -hmm. but at least at the beginning. Yeah. So why, what was the question that you asked? Why do you think she's putting these demands on you? She has a brother who lives in Alaska, and he's married and has four boys. One of them's in college, one of them's my age, one of them's just starting high school, and the other one's like in elementary school. And he's a pilot, but there's nothing in Alaska. As I'm sure people know, like they don't even have paved roads. So his wife is an Alaska native. So I think when his oldest child went to college and then dropped out to try and be a rap star, and that's not going well. <laughs> um, but he's 
she's like, I don't think I want to go back to college. And she's worried that the rest of those three boys are going to follow like that. One of them wants to go into the Navy. He's a twig. He's going to snap on day one. <laughs> um, the other one, the third one, we think he might get out because he's, like, he's charismatic. He's outgoing. He makes friends in five minutes wherever he goes. And then the last one's too young to tell, we think. So we don't know. Um, that was an interesting choice of words. What, charismatic? We think, and no, no, um, where you said we, the third one, we think he's going to get out. Get out of, like, yeah, of Alaska? Alaska? But oh. get out, yeah. look at what she said. Falling. Safety falling. and falling. So that's a pretty narrow sort of place. You think of, and if you think of the parachute, you fall in one space. Yeah. So there seems to be some limitation in terms of what, what does she have to get out of? I mean, she's going to the hugest school in the state. Yeah. UCF is huge. Have you seen the campus? I mean, it's just it's immense. It's beautiful campus. It's beautiful. So there's a reason that she's choosing of all the places, because she obviously has very good grades. Ironically, it's far away, but yet close enough. Ironically, my mom went to that college. OK. So your mom went there, but we learned about your mom that she, hasn't, she didn't choose. She didn't choose a field that got her anything. Does your mother, question that comes to my mind, is does your mother have anything else besides you? Does she have a career? Does she have any um, other focal point that isn't you? Not really. She works at State Farm and like for like almost 20 years, I think. Um, she's dated like two guys, and I think I was younger than 10 for both of them. Um, yeah, and then she, like, when my, my dad has just girlfriends, not like, all of, all over the place, but he's had girlfriends for like a couple years at a time, and he remarried, and I remember her, and I, I miss that lady, to be honest. Um, but my mom, she's like, what your dad is doing is messed up. You can't be bringing women in and out of the children's life, a child's life. Whoa. Hi. I'm oh, so sorry. Did I, did yes. Would you mind if I bought no, a James? No, no, no. Okay. Um, and then she like judges his habits. She's like, is her his girlfriend sleeping over sometimes? And he, I'm like, yeah. And she says, do you see a problem with that? And I say, no, if they're dating and they've been dating for a year, why can't she sleep over every so often? And she's like, if you ever get a boyfriend, don't sleep in his house. His mom's gonna frown upon that. And I'm like, our generation is literally like that. Oh my God, my boyfriend's <laughs> mom says, can you stay here? I don't want him driving you home so late. Right, what the heck? Yeah. Um, well, and so how small is her mom's world? Very, very, very. Yeah. And so her parachute saves her from that limited space, from that limited world. Yeah. But I'm wondering, when you first started your story, you started with her brother and his family and his kids. Because he's more successful than my mom, in a way. Because she sits at a desk all day, but he's flying all over the place. So because she sits at a desk, her job's not as important as his because he's flying everywhere. I'm just yeah, it's throwing a, it out there. It's a stationary job. She's been working there for 20 years and hasn't had any type of Essential. yeah promotion. So 20 anything. years at a job? Almost, yeah. And That's then, but she said stability for the feet. Right. But what I thought was interesting, besides the word stationary, think of stationary, there's no movement, no movement. is Alaska is huge. Yeah. Alaska by no means is a small location. But you're right. I mean, I've been to Alaska, and this the little town is yeah, tiny. Yeah. And there isn't much to do, so to speak. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of nature stuff, but also the weather impacts. Mm -hmm. So even though the family is in a wide, vast space like UCF, you're limited in terms of what you're able to do. And now your parents are sending you to UCF, 
but they're limiting you without a car. Yeah. So she's trying to get an emotional support in the Okay. So it's I this. I had one. I had well, he wasn't officially emotional support, but like that's so easy to do for eighty bucks. Oh, support eighty. Yeah. Fifty. My two hundred. No, no, it's like fifty bucks online. online. Yeah. yeah, they send you a little pad. Yes, my so dog has it. a little ID card. Yeah. Do you know your if you idea? Take it, <laughs> my dog's had one. Yeah, if you take it on the airline, they require the papers written from a psychologist. So right, a therapist, because yeah. that's in them before that. Yeah, you. That's not hard to get at home. That's you not go hard. in and you're like this dog. Make an appointment, and the, the therapist well, writes you a letter. I have the animal. It was a cat ripped away from me, kind of thing. Oh my god. Um. I found him. Yeah, she gave it to me, but my dad was like, no, we're not getting an animal. So I conveniently found an animal. And then my dad fell in love with him on day two. So we kept him. And then my dad and I went on a week long vacation for my 18th birthday this March to DC. When's your birthday? It was March. March what? Uh, 21st. Oh, I'm um, the 14th. Oh, you're nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we came back, and my grandmother suddenly saying she's allergic to the cat. And then she apparently had <laughs> flu in. Bless me. That is so cute. And that one just crept up out of nowhere. I don't know. <laughs> so sorry. Um, and then she, the doctor was saying she has fluid in her lungs. But I got the cat, what, September? Yeah, I'm laughing. And then. March, mid-March is when these symptoms are suddenly appearing. It was sketchy to me. And my gra my grandmother's name is Princess. She's a very, very, very self-centered person. I can't stand it. And she, we're not gonna get into that. <laughs> but, I'm seeing the pattern. She lives with I'm you. I'm seeing the pattern yeah, she right there. Dad. Oh. This is your mom's mom. Dad's no, mom. No, dad's mom. His name Princess. The cat, the cat was at her dad's house. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are we done? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I kind of felt like, I mean, I felt bad for thinking this, but to me it was a possibility. My dad and I went on this trip for my birthday and she didn't go and she felt kind of left out. So she wanted the attention back on her. So she said, I'm having this problem and need to get rid of the cat. Okay, so what have we learned about attention being taken from a person, male or female. Who's her alliance with? Her alliance with is with her father. There's always an alliance. Father alliance or mother alliance? We learned that her alliance is with her father and that the person she's going to have a problem with is mom. So if every person, place, thing, or situation is mom, who's grandma? and there has to be a problem. So you're not far off from thinking that mm -hmm. at all. And that's probably your mom too that wants to have attention. So has there been a time where you have ever created some drama or something to get attention to you? Not at all. Yeah, like my mother, she, like, she shoves attention on me, but not in the way, like, bad attention. Like, what are you doing? Where are you? Why aren't you home yet? Why are you driving all over the place? Exactly. Okay. And what is she wearing? My clothes. <laughs> all of us. That's the only thing that fit her. <laughs> Subconsciously? I have darker clothes. I, yeah, I picked it out, but... Darker than black? No, like, <laughs> Oh, because oh, <laughs> I'd rather not be seen. Now her feet, her shoes are light. That's her mom's shoes. And we learned <laughs> that, again, it's not accidental. We have conscious and logical and rational responses to everything. But that does not mean that the subconscious is not in control. She almost wore black shoes, but I was like, you know, they're too high heels. They're, they were a little too high for her. Okay, I didn't want her to be comfortable because I'm a seven and a half, so none of my shoes fit her. So I had to get my mom's, who's a nine, nine and a half, and that's her. And then my mom said I have these fancy pants, and you can wear them. And then 
that's true. So if you knew you were sleeping in her house, why didn't you pack clothes? Because everything's packed for college. Oh, okay. And I was like, oh my god, I have class in the morning. I pack clothes, just not nice, nice clothes. I don't believe these clothes. Okay. So same thing as the relaxation. Touch my feet. Mm -hmm. stay but let the stay there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stay far away. I need to create a distance. <coughs> And so getting too sort of touchy-feely with her, which is not an Aries thing at all, Aries is fire. So stay a little distance. Harry, Aries rules the head. So it's like, I'm ahead of you, but mom didn't let her. When you guys walked, mom was right there, keeping the pace. And slow down over here. And slow dad. <laughs> but dad gives her more of the space. That's why alliance is with dad. Okay. So Samantha, you said escape and save your life? Mm -hmm. Okay, why? Um, I saw it as it's both because I've well my boyfriend's cousin goes jumping all the time and always tells us come do it, come do it. So he, he always tells us that it's there's a safe thing to it and there's a folly thing to it. Like you fall and you enjoy the fall, and then there's also safety on it because you just pull it and your life is on the line. And then my boyfriend said something weird yesterday because he looked at the dice and he was like, oh, I want to try it. He said something with, like, you choose to save your life. You either jump or you just pull the string. Like, it's an option. And so I you have like, the option of not pulling the string. That's what he said. I didn't. I was like, oh. <laughs> So that's very telling of the boyfriend. But that's his cousin too, because his cousin, it failed one of the last times that he went oh. and scared the crap out of us. And then he had to pull the small one, and then he landed really hard, and he posted the video all, all over Facebook, and we were all like, don't ever go jumping again. Because to jump alone, you need over 200 jumps. Because other than that, you're strapped to someone's chest. Tandem, right? So, yeah. So Did he's been jumping for a no, while. I, never I, I did go up in a hand glider. I want to do an angler. I want to do I would do the suit, the the wing suit, but I I would never just free fall. So she sees this as a an escape, way. but yet save your life. But what's the escape? I hear the saving your life part, but I haven't heard the escape. That was again what my boyfriend said. He he wrote it down. It was weird. He said something like. Um, like you can escape like when you're jumping out of a plane like when it's been hijacked you can jump or escape from something that's happening because wh when you usually jump you're jumping out of a plane so you can either escape or run away from something or like i said hijacked or there's a fire on the plane that was what do you hear said. escape from something Something's no extreme. you looked at me yeah. don't Sensor, you yeah. looked at me for a reason. You heard something. What? You want an escape from something. Yeah, I guess that was kind of his last night. He, he said this weird story that was nuts. Well, what I want to know is why you keep saying escape from the plane. Escape is going to blow. Uh, the plane's going to blow up. Like, like I said, terrorists. Because when I saw why? the parachute, I thought last night, because that was what he got. He got the escape, and that was the first thing he said. He said, had to escape, engine failed, plus there's a fire in the plane, had to jump. But isn't there one more option? Not to jump, to stay on the plane and have it land? No, because the engine failed. No, but say it didn't fail. Okay, but whose story is she telling? You're telling, yeah, not she's not telling her story. No, that's what I you thought. You guys are missing that. Not she is not telling story. her story. And you will have clients that do that, right. who will repeatedly tell their parent's story, their boyfriend's story, but their friend's story. Or escape and that's because you overthought you over this audience. Right. She's <laughs> escaping from self. Well, we were just she has saying. not answered the question about herself. She keeps to the point that she has about it written myself. down, taken really out of her, her purse. So, Wait. and you're not supposed to overthink it. You're supposed to just... Yeah, that's what, like, that was when I thought parachute, I was like, oh. Because I, I always related to something personal. So when I thought parachute, I was like, oh. Well, my wife's cousin just jumped out of the plane and almost died. So then I was like, he, 
saved his life because he had the extra pull. But and the first you, one didn't work. Do you hear what you're saying? It's he, 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 not me, me, me. Oh, I had to relate it to myself? I was just this is first your no. impression. And clients will share story, and, mm -hmm. and we're deciphering the story that they're sharing, but it's a very clear thing that you keep putting it on to the Nobody other. Else. And what do we know about her origin story? She was very wanted. Very wanted, yeah, but what but else? She also had a lot of... Um... Did you see the newspaper? No, I didn't. She brought her new You did bring it? Oh, I'd like to see it.